President Mohammed Buhari, Vice President Oshibajo, and uh, Tinubu preached national unity as national leader of the APC, clocked 69. And President Buhari goes tough for the service chiefs to fish out bandit leaders and restore peace. Plus, politics starts now, and I am Justin Akadonia. Now, on Tuesday, President Mohamed Buhari said Nigerians are better and stronger together. He noted that he defended the unity of the country as a soldier during the civil war. He spoke against the backdrop of calls by groups and individuals for secession in different parts of the country. Now, discussing with me is a journalist, Dikbo Olayoku, and a former lawmaker, Kainde Odeneye, who represented Ijebu Ode, Odogbolu, and Ijebu Northeast Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives. Before I bring my panelists a look at the issue of national unity, let's just take highlights of the colloquium we held uh, yesterday. Our common bond, our common wealth the imperative of national cohesion for growth and prosperity. That is a theme for this year's edition of the Bola Tinubu Colloquium, held to mark the 69th birthday of the former governor of Lagos State and national leader of the All Progressives Congress. The event held at the Coronation Hall, Kano State, and was attended physically and virtually by President Muhammad Wari, former president of Sierra Leone, Dr. Enes Bai Koruma, the President of Liberia, George Weir, Vice President, Professor Yemiyu Shimbajo, the Governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduji, and other state governors, National Assembly leadership with the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, traditional leaders, and many more. As the Chairman of the occasion, President Muhammad Buhari, advised that the country should consolidate on the strength of its unity. We must count our blessings in Nigeria and see in them the crucial factors of peace and unity. Adding his voice, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo argues that Nigerians are stronger and more powerful together than being apart. For the purveyors of breaking up into small components, into small countries, perhaps they should be reminded that we would not have been able to accept Governor Ganduje's offer to come to Kano at short notice since we would all have needed visas to come to Kano. The Kano state governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, stated the importance of having a united Nigeria. Issues of tribalism, religious intolerance, nepotism, suspicion among the elites, all these variables, unless if we come together, they will continue to pull us down. And the celebrant, Ashiwaju Bolatinubu, shared his views on Nigeria's unemployment figures and the urgency Nigeria needs to fix the gap. It is time. We are under police and we are, comp we are competing with arm robbers and the bandits to recruit from the youths who are unemployed. 33% unemployed recruit 50 million youths into the army and the... Uh, Take away from their recruitment source. The 12th Bola Tinubu Colloquium is held annually to mark the former governor's birthday with the aim to bring burning national discourse to the fore. Osao Gie Ogbonwa, Plus TV Africa. All right, thanks for staying with us. Once again, discussing with me, uh, journalist Dikbo Olayoko and a former lawmaker, uh, Dene Akende, who represented Ijebu Ode, Odogbolu, Ijebu Northeast Federal Constituency, that's in Ogun State. Once again, good evening to you, gentlemen. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. All right, let me start with you, Honorable Odeneye. They are lately in the news in Nigeria, there has been several calls, uh, several agitations for 
cessation, uh, the Igbo groups are doing this, uh, same with uh, other uh, social uh, uh, ge geopolitical zone in Nigeria, the Yorubas, and of course um, the Hausas, uh, who believe that uh, Nigeria is better off um, apart. What exactly are your thoughts when you see all of these calls for cessation? Yeah, um, recently it caused for um, very big concern. And uh, looking at what is happening in Nigeria of today, uh, one is tempted to conclusively say that um, actually there is a need for um, not necessarily cessation, but there's a need for us to look at where we are coming from, where we are, and where we are likely to be heading to. Um, things have changed drastically from what it used to be, and um, and that is, I, I think, what is leading to all the agitation. However, we must not be reminded of the fact that um, situation won't come so cheap and easy the way people are actually looking at it. Um, there are a lot of things that um, must be considered, and they're looking at other countries that have actually broken into pieces. We realize that um, one, it didn't come cheap. Two, how stable have they been? And what has been their situation economically and um, um, in every other um, ramification? So, what I think um, uh, we need to address here is looking at where we are coming from, where we are, and where we are heading to. And what exactly led us to where we are today? And what can we do to ensure that we get out of from we, we, we address every concern? Um, again, we need to, we can't waive the agitation. You know, we need to consider what are the various uh, consumer provisions that as of today that needed to be um, either reviewed or amended so that the yearnings of the people can be considered. Again, I am not, I'm not totally in support of this um, uh, uh, for us to break. However, if we have to look at our federal structure very carefully in order to accommodate everybody in such a way that uh, we do not have a situation where a section of the country is far, far favored more than another section. As long as we remain one indefeasible element, there's a need for us to ensure that everybody is carried along, everybody is considered, and everybody enjoys the benefits of us being together. These are my submissions. All right, thank you, Honorable uh, Adene, for your opening salvo. We will get back to you, but let's talk to uh, Dikbo Olayoko right now. Is there a true beauty in um, diversity uh, putting Nigeria as a, as a case in mind right now, specifically with several calls for secession? You are a Yoruba man, and lately there's been this uh, call by, uh, you know, Sunday Igboho asking that the Yoruba uh, people or Yoruba nation should be left to do their own thing. How does this really hit you? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, I am a strong believer in one strong, indivisible Nigeria. And that is going to guide my thoughts as I make my submission this evening. I believe so much in Nigeria. I believe that uh, our diversity can be harnessed to make this country a great country. There are some peculiarities that can be traced to the different segments of Nigeria, like our brothers from the southeast. You can see a lot of commerce from their side. Our brothers from the north, agriculture. And then our total of course from the southwest bureaucracy and education. Mm -hmm. If we harness these attributes properly 
In the next 10 years, Nigeria is going to rank among the best in the world. But unfortunately, Nigeria is blessed, blessed in quotes, with bad leadership. How that one has been our major, I want to call it luck, since the advent of independence. I don't know how it came into being. There was a, there is a room, there is one joke attributed to a former head of state. How far it is true, I don't know. They said he was in the midst of his friends. They were playing the game of uh, one Yoruba traditional game called Lopon. And then some people were asking, why is Nigeria like this? Nigeria is so blessed. They said even one time the angels in heaven were talking to God. And they said, Baba, why did you bless Nigeria with this kind of a thing? So much abundant resources, mineral and human resources. He said, but God told the angels, don't worry. I'm going to give them bad leaders. How far it is true, I don't know. But now on a very serious note, our major problem is the problem of leadership. You see, some of the reasons why some of us, especially me, I don't believe that uh, Nigeria should break. Because whatever problem, you notice that national level of Nigeria can be traced to all the layers of government in Nigeria. Not only the government, but only individuals. I even among individuals. Let me give you one sentence that happened to me when I finished secondary school many years back. That time there was still a country, according to Professor Shunya Shebe. I finished my work on a Friday. I was to begin a job on this on a on Monday in one of the ministries. Open state has just been created again. I was I got a job to resume on Monday. My uncle had to come to our house Sunday night. It's late now. He is like a threat to come to our house on Sunday night. And what was his mission? Then he came. He said, Dipo, you are going to the world now. You are no more a student. You are going to the world, uh, his ministry. That he had one advice for me. And the only advice that man had for me, I am from Abekuta. Just like him, he was from Abekuta. That as you get into the ministry, avoid making friends with Ijebu. <laughs> In Ogun State, we have three major sections. The Eba, the Ijebu, and then the Yewa. And my uncle came all the way from his house to tell me not to have anything to do with the Ijebu in Ogun State. And all of you are supposed to So then why are we complaining state? of problems at national level? Mm. Even if you come into our southwest, we will still have problems because we don't have confidence in ourselves. Okay. There's this usual area, it's a popular saying then, that they are immediately after the creation of uh, city states or first years of the western states, they say, Jebu Oda, Jebu Jesha Oshumo, and they call Jebu Jesha. Literally translated that the poor is not good. Okay. The Jeshaman is not is bad. Somebody is now calling himself a Jebu Joshua within the Yoruba enclave. So in your, in your, in your summation, uh, if I got you correctly, you are saying that uh, there is also the need to strengthen uh, the issues at um, the levels, uh, at the zones, at the southwest, at the southeast, and of course the northwest and northeast, because uh, if we've not been able to fix those issues we have internally, we'll not be able to fix what we have nationally. Yes, of course. So even if we break, we will still have all those problems we are having in Nigeria now at domestic level. All right, thank you, Dick. We we'll have come back to countries you. like Sudan. All right. You know how Sudan broke into the two, mm. what has become of that country? So I think we should take a cue from those countries that are broken right. and what has become of their what have become their pitch. Okay, Honorable Odenaya, let's uh, bring you back into the conversation. Initially, you talked about uh, if there is the need uh, to maybe amend the constitution so that we remain as one united entity, we should do that. But right now, some concerns from various quarters uh, have been that of uh, marginalization, uh, that some parts of the country have not been treated uh, 
well enough to stay together as one country. Would you say these concerns and these complaints and uh, you know, uh, agitations are actually genuine? Yes, yeah, def def definitely. Um, I think the agitations are genuine. Genuine in the sense that we are a country of various components. If that be the case, every component of this country is very, very important to the sustenance of the existence of this country. Every component of this country has one thing or the other to contribute to the continuous development of this nation. And if that be the case, every component has, must have equal rights and equal opportunities. So where any component feels that such component has not been well treated or fairly treated, there will definitely be agitations. And that is why I am an advocate of rotational presidency among all the components of this nation to the extent that everybody will feel satisfied that now, when you say um, each component belongs to uh, this country. Okay, no, but then, so let me just butt in. When you say rotational uh, presidency as it were, uh, what exactly are you saying in clear terms? Are you saying that um, the, the Igbo race or nation as it is should uh, go uh, into power for four years, uh, followed by the Yoruba and the Hausa every four years? Uh, what exactly do you really have? What picture are you exactly painting? What, that, 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 that is very close to what I am talking about. And what I'm saying precisely is that the Igbo, the Yoruba, the Hausa must have equal opportunities at getting to the presidency level. When Igbos do their own, Yoruba take their turn, how does take their turn? And if there's any other component that is different from all these three, because these are the three majors mm. that everybody has got to know. But if there is if there's any other component that is also here, we must also give them a fair share so that everybody will have a taste of that presidency and rule. In that case, there will be even there will be uh, there will be even development and and even distribution of infrastructure, uh, uh, um, even wealth and other things. So nobody will feel that we have the right to power. Why okay. some people must be sub uh, why some people must continue to be submissive to us? That is the way. That is the way a lot of people have construed this situation to be. And that is why there were always the agitations of you no know, that we should go separate so that everybody can manage his resources, everybody can be on his own, and everybody can contribute to the development of his own. But we are all of us are seen to be the same. You see, some people still feel that we are not the same. But some people still feel that power remains somewhere. Some people still feel that some sections or some regions are favored more than the other. All this has to be addressed. Either in our constitution, in our you know, in, in, in our existence, and everything must be brought okay. to the table. We must sit down. You see, before independence, there were people in different um, regions or they were in components. During independence, everybody came together to agree that we must live as a nation. So that coming together must not just be a one-off thing. It has to be a consistent thing, a continuous address. We must always come together to say that, okay, what is the situation? At any point in time, when there's any agitation, we must find a way of coming back together again to sit down and address such situations. All right, Where we you. feel that we can't address that situation, there will always be, there will always be problems, there will always be continuous agitation, and okay. there will always be aggressiveness. So All right, let us slide over to. to in All, every right. Situation. All right, let us slide over now to uh, Dikpo. Uh, you've um, been following the conversation and you have heard um, the thoughts of um, Honorable Kendi Odene. What are your specific thoughts uh, concerning the issue of uh, zoning and, of course, each uh, geopolitical zone having uh, a taste and um, a share in government every four years? Uh, is it the panacea to all of the issues that we have? vis-a-vis uh, -vis staying together as a country. And you also talked about um, leadership. What crop of leaders should we be having at this particular time? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Because uh, whatever we can do to keep Nigeria together, I'm all for it. 
if it is the zoning or recessional presidency, as the Honorable have said, has said, if that is the solution, no problem. But it is just very, very unfortunate that we as a nation have reduced governance to where did they come from. Okay. And it is not only at national level, it happens at the state level. And the same thing with local government level. Let me use our own state as an example. There is this discussion around when are you going to allow the people from Yiwa to become the governor? Mm. It is as bad as that. At every election period in Obo State, there is always this subject of when is Yiwa people going to become the governor? Because it has always been like between the Egbas and then the Jebus. But that is where we have found ourselves. But at the national level, anytime we are talking about regional presidency, we are looking at Igbo Yoruba Usta. Mm. We are forgotten that I just, yes, the Honorable made allusion to it. We have the middle we are belt, we have that the south-south. people that are not Yoruba, I will say How do we accommodate them? Mm. And you see, it is very, very unfortunate that we are looking at the governance or the rule of the affairs of a country from the level of the very few people that constitute what you call the government. Because if you look at the population of Nigeria, how many people are in government? Now we talk of the other areas of human endeavor in Nigeria. When we are looking at people in government, what are people in commerce? What are people in other areas? Who is marginalizing who? If that is what we are talking about, marginalization. That is why when we begin to open down all these things, we will discover that even those who we think are being marginalized are actually not being marginalized. Why do we think are being favored are not actually being favored. This talk about oh, somebody from this place must become the president. Chief Olicha Gomasunja was the president of Nigeria for eight years. Apart from the first city and the years he used as a military head of state. Has the fate of the Yoruba man has been better, is it better than the other areas? We know the condition of uh, some of the roads in the uh, southwest, where Baba Sanjo left office. The, we are talking about the thing favoring the north. What is the poverty rate in the north? It is because we are looking at the shadows. We are not looking at the real substance of governance. But since we have reduced governance to the level of oh, where did he come from? Uh, is he a Christian or a Muslim? Uh, does his father have three or four wives? It's as bad as that. And that okay. is why Nigeria has remained at where it is today. But when we have good leaders that can provide for everybody, not minding where you or she, where you come from, Nigeria will transfer this level of governance. Where is it from the north? Is it from the south? By virtue of my own upbringing, as somebody who was growing up, when the Papa Mialo was the child, Papa Mialo made us not to look at national, like national, per se. Papa Mialo was so concerned about his region that many Yoruba do not even look at what is happening at the general level. Is it free education, free health services? All manner of good things. They call it life more abundant. Was what about was providing for us in the Southwest? So we are not so bothered about what is happening in the North. No, so, uh, in the national, sorry, at national level. I, I think we hope, I hope Nigeria will get to the level. Okay. Where we will not be looking at where the, the, the president come from. Because it reduced governance to, to, the, to, 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 the, to, to, to the lowest level. But like I said initially, if traditional presidency is what will give Nigeria the peace, yeah. let us go for it. All right, thank but you so what much. we need to go after mm. is whatever region that is going to provide the president, let them give us their best. All right. We, we have, we, I think that should be our major concern. Any region that is going to provide the president, mm. any zone that is going to give us the president, let them give us their best. All right. Not just anything. Because he's from this place, he must vote for him or her. I think Nigeria should have gone beyond that level. All right, thank you, Dikbo. Honorable Kane De Odene, once again, before we wrap up this session, let's talk about uh, what we need to be doing uh, going forward to calm some certain nerves uh, that are really very agitated right now. Uh, we've had uh, a confabulation in Nigeria, have uh, several dialogues at the national level 
almost every other day we have um, debates at the House of Representatives and at the Senate where we have representation from all aspects of the country. With all of this, uh, how come the conversation is not talking about uh, building stronger institutions and uh, building a strong crop of uh, leadership in Nigeria? Yeah, see, as Zipa has sadly put it in his opening remarks, the major problem we have in Nigeria is about leadership. We need leadership that is going to carry everybody along, that will consider everybody. We need leadership that will take into consideration every concern of every Nigerian. We need a leadership that will, be, that will have listening here. We need leadership that will, talk, that will take care of security. I will not let anybody feel that, no, it is because the people that are complaining, they are, that people are complaining about is from my place or something like that, we will not be able to do anything. We need leadership that will address the yearnings of the people. We need leadership that will um, fulfill promises, electoral promises. It is very, very important. Because the same promises now are made in Nigeria just to convince the electorate. And immediately we are voted in, we tend to forget what we have promised Nigeria. We even tend to believe that um, we cannot, because no, no, we cannot, uh, nobody can uh, hold us responsible for what we promised Nigeria. And these are some of the problems. So no matter how much or how many times we sit down, as long as we do not have uh, leadership that takes concerns of the people into consideration, there will always be problems. And now that man can run this country successfully without directly showing him that I'm an Awusa man because we are one Nigeria. And a new man can run this country successfully without directly showing favor to any particular um, uh, section of the country and everybody will, will, will be satisfied. Let us take care of most things that are very important. Where leadership provides opportunities, equal opportunities to everybody. All right. Where security is guaranteed, where employment is guaranteed, where Nigerians are able to put food on their tables. I think nobody will, I, I, I don't think anybody will, will get too agitated. All right, about, thank you. So what we need, mm. what we need to address specifically is leadership, good leadership. All right, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, we need to address the issue of leadership in Nigeria. So the average Nigerian will not be concerned about uh, you being Igbo, Hausa, or Yoruba, or even if you're from the South South, we just need to uh, provide food for the average Nigerian. We need to ensure that there is employment and the issue of security is being tackled. Uh, once again, I must say a very thank you to uh, my panelists uh, who joined uh, us uh, via telephone and, of course, Zoom to look at all of this issue and, of course, uh, ensuring that Nigeria stays as one in the visible uh, lead uh, nation. That is a uh, very big thank you to you, Honorable Len Kane, the Odenaya. Uh, so, uh, so much you have said today, and we do appreciate all of your thoughts. And of course, again, thank Dipo Malayoku, a journalist, thank you so much for all of your inputs this evening. It's always a pleasure. All right, uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, President Mohammed Buhari has ordered service chiefs to identify leaders of those terrorizing the country. In a moment, join us again.